Hello and good day. My name is Daniel Bosa. I'm a sophomore at the City University of New York, Bryce Community College. Today I will be talking about my summer research project at the Icon Bio RU at the University of Tennessee Chattanooga for the summer of 2021, working with Dr. Ziwei Ma and Dr. Hong Chin. What was my summer's research about? It delved into the aging process in Saccharomyces cerevisiae, or SC for short, specifically creating mathematical models of aging and yeast fungi, or yeast as they are known. Why, but why would we be interested in creating mathematical models of fungi? This requires some background. Why would we even decide to use yeast as a model for aging? When it was first proposed in 1959, some clinical skepticism was met to the concept. A single unicellular organism is difficult to imagine to imagining providing insight into aging of organisms like humans, one of the most complex of biological phenomena. However, focusing on the longevity pathways all eukaryotes have, especially on an organism as simple as to grow and maintain that as a seed, makes conducting research on cellular aging easy. One may ask, what are these factors that contribute to aging and yeast? How do they function? What triggers them? For decades, various models have been tried to account for phenomenon in SC cells. For a phenomenon in SC cells, when daughter cells split from mother cells, a scar develops for each daughter cell on a mother cell for each daughter cell buddied from a mother cell. Also, the mother cell increased size as it aged. Early models try to account for this big and upper limit in a number of scars and size of mother cell. Also, analysis revealed these models to be lacking. Increasing by artificial means cell size didn't mean lifespan, didn't mean reduced lifespan, nor did increased cell surface area affect the ability of the mother cell to accommodate extra scarring. In case that wasn't clear, increasing a cell size, nor did uh, increased cell surface area affect the ability of the mother cell to accommodate extra scarring. And it even didn't reduce, and it didn't reduce lifespan either. Functional gene clusters and yeast yield the correlations between them and conservation and longevity pathways. These clusters examine a set of 4,000 plus single gene deletion strains, demonstrated certain gene deletions expanded lifespan fastly. What, in essence, is this summer's research about to identify factors in cellular aging and SC, which impact yeast replicative lifespan? Then, after further exploring single gene deletions, which are useful to quantify the impact of the deleted gene in yeast aging in two measures, strength and variability, using statistical methods. We then further exploration of these two methods and effect of gene regulation pathways by using computational algorithms. Methods. First, let me detail my data sources. The size of qualitative literature on this, and a model's labor sense. I have a data set of an SC's fungi replicative lifespan. They contain gene deletions of the SC and the lifespans of each of these gene deletions provided by Dr. Ma. And this is a very small data set, but very useful nonetheless. Survival analysis or reliability engineering is a set of statistical methods analyze the expected duration of time until one event occurs, such as death in organisms or failures in engineering. Its goal is to see if there is a connection between covariates and the time of certain events. It is a type of regression problem, except that the training data can only be partially seen or censored. Think of patients in the asthma study being studied over a one-year period. Patient A did a follow-up after six months into the study. Patient B did not have an event during the study. Patient C had a plasma attack eight months into the study. Patient D withdrew five months into the study, and patient E had an event 11 months into the study. Only patients B, C, and E had some sort of event recorded. Thus, it's uncensored. For A and B, their ultimate results are unknown, and thus censored. One could say that some event will happen for B, C, and E after the study, otherwise known as a right censored event. But since the event will happen outside of time scope of the study, it does not matter. Assume that this study <coughs> tracked for an event that was supposed to happen to the, to the patients at the six month mark. If patient F had an event three months in the study, you'll call this event left censored since it happened before the particular time, otherwise known as a failure for survival analysis. Using parametric models, a de facto standard of biology, 
such as gamma, gompertz, we can call all events in data set race sensor. As since the events, gene deletion has already happened. Applying the gompertz function to the data set by fitting it will yield a solution to the gompertz differential equation and the function is itself a solution to the Gompertz differential equation, itself a type of stochastic differential equation. Which algorithms can be used in this project? First, let me state what algorithms are. They are basically a recipe, an ordered list of things to do in a sequence. Computational algorithms that we seek in using would be able to sort through the gene deletions and see which of these genes would be the most beneficial or detrimental to the gene regulation pathway. What could be used to implement this research analysis? R, a statistical programming language. It contains various libraries of computational algorithms to use on a data set. Using R to convert data set into a data frame, a two-dimensional labeled data structure with columns of potentially different types, to then apply a parametric and computational algorithms too. The computational algorithms would have to be run on a high-performance computing cluster for the single gene deletions. FlexServe is a library package in R that contains statistical methods and survival analysis. This library is used for fitting the RLS data in the data set to the various parametric models used in our research analysis. Here, a variable PAM fit is being assigned to a statement in R that is fitting an instance of serve, part of FlexServe package, for a plan meter method. The output produced below returns a computed estimate of a survival curve for the sensor data. Autoplot of KM returns a plot of the, empirical amount of the empirical survival curve of the sensor data as shown here. As you can see here, using the MUATS library in Flexor, you can use the KPATS has fit to plot the hazard rate of the sensor data. You can also see different value changes for Weeble, Gamma, and Goldberg's. So if you notice here for Weeble, the shape is actually included in the estimate, and then the scale is way different than what you will see from gamma and Goldberg's. And then gamma, now notice that gamma here does have a shape, but it has a different one than Weibo, and that is also including the rates. And Goldberg's rates of aggregation seem to converge into zero from both negative and positive vertices on the number line. So if you do notice both Goldberg's and gammas do have different uh, do have di different rates, and that they include rates in them, and that the rates are tend to be converging to around zero from either negative or positive uh, number. You also see that Weibo covers a different scope scale in terms of data point clustering, as seen here. Gamma's shape tends to be more drawn out between zero and five in terms of shape, as you see at the bottom. Uh, on the horizontal line, horizontal number line, for sure. And Goldberg's shape doesn't extend beyond 0 0.5. The difference between two models is that the hazard or failure rate for Goldberg is increasing when A, when A in shape is greater than zero, constant for A equals zero, and increasing when A is less than zero. However, for, for gamma, S is increasing when A in shape is greater than one, and is constant for A equals one, and increasing when A is less than one. Conducting scientific research over virtual setting is very, very complicated. Even though we are conducting dry research, that is research that doesn't require contact with chemicals or biological matter, it was challenging to conduct. Access to facilities such as IT support and computing might not come by easy. Conducting research virtually, <coughs> also, <coughs> conducting research virtually also have to take into account situations for both the mentor and mentee, such as time zone differences and other life circumstances. Another thing is that it's difficult to learn concepts or research mentees in a non-academic, i.e. non-academic campus environment. You have to learn this despite life circumstances they're surrounded by and not being in an environment where they can have physical, face-to-face -face contact with a research mentor. Especially for new researchers, this can be an impediment. The focus of research is critical too, and the above are detailed how virtual research can affect research mentees, all which have applied to me. Now I will detail the research itself. A research project dealt with measuring biological quantities. However, that didn't mean the research scope itself is purely biological. In fact, it was analysis of biological properties using mathematical modeling. 
One thing that I noticed that I faced difficulty with was getting immersed in fact from my research project out of scope. I dealt too heavily in the biological aspects of the research. Now, having background knowledge of the material you are working on is very much needed. However, for this research project, you only need a working and not comprehensive knowledge of some of the biological mechanisms of the research. We are supposed to be mostly interested in these mechanisms and structures from a mathematical standpoint. The rest, as some textbooks say, can be left up to the reader. The project itself has a small data set, about 19 megabytes. However, the tools used made a world of difference in analysis of the data set. Initially, I wanted to use Python, a programming language, and Pandas, a library in Python. Think of the Pandas library as a toolkit to organize and analyze data. I seek to use Pandas to clean and organize the data into a data frame to conduct further analysis of the gene deletion data set using survival analysis, and then prep it for further analysis on, a comp on computational algorithms in a high performance cluster. Research, especially in the STEM setting, is complicated. Most importantly, it requires adherence to listening to a research advisor and open communication. Conducting research in a virtual environment was challenging for me. This is my first RIU, and I came into it with preconceived notions. In general, as a research mentee, it helps to come into any project, especially when a research mentor, that as few preconceived notions as possible. <coughs> I came thinking that research is one big suite of instant clarification on a certain topic, a literal eureka moment. Instead, it's a series of continuous steps, lots of them very small, in order to reach a research goal. Dr. Chin elaborated on how some of his research took over decades to complete, something I will take into mind long after this RIU. As a research mentee, listening is possibly the most important thing you can do. As pointed out for a picture in this slide. Not only listening, but asking questions and also paraphrasing information you learn back to your research mentor to one, clarifying questions you have, and two, so your research mentor can be certain of where you are in terms of understanding and age you in any gaps of knowledge. For the future, I would highly recommend that analysis be done using statically typed languages when possible. It would be hard to get the analogous libraries for data analysis in those languages, but not impossible. This would help ensure code and computational fidelity and analysis involving large computational computations. Also, further analysis and gene deletions are often more than just looking through some computational algorithms. But it would be possible to apply a gene algorithm to a data set of gene deletion to get a final analysis of exactly how these gene deletions interact with one another. It would be interesting to see how gene deletions interact a genetic algorithm optimized for genetic constraints. A project also would be pursued for using stochastic differential equations to further check for white or random noise for ERC mechanism exploration. What is the ERC mechanism? A short explanation. Extra chromosomal RDNA circles, or ERC, are self replicating strains of RDNA. These are the senescence factors for SC. ERCs are formed by the excision or incision, I should say, of one of the repeat sequences of RDNA, followed by a homeologous recombination. Each ERC contains an autonomously replicating sequence, ARS, and so is able to replicate independently during the S phase. Copy numbers of ERC have a tendency to build up fast in chromosome DNA, leading to an overabundance. So when the cell divides, the mother cell tends to retain as much as possible the ERCs. In older mother cells, however, this project can fail, and more than average ERCs are passed in a mother. Daughter cells with ERCs inherited from their mothers are de facto somewhat advanced in age. However, in early divisions, while its ERC burn is still small, the mechanisms of asymmetrical segregation permit ERC inheriting daughter cells to produce ERC free daughters themselves. Thus, explain how prematurely aged daughters of old mothers are nevertheless able to produce normal young offspring. ERC is formed during the 15 generations of about 500 to 1,000. The mathematical models of ERC formation are using a constant, a linear, or quadratic probability structure. ERC should be further explored in a future continuation of summer research. I want to acknowledge the support, guidance, and patience of Dr. Zhu Wei Ma and Dr. Hong Chin in this research. I also do want to acknowledge the support of the NSF and internal support in the University of Tennessee Chattanooga. Without these individuals and organizations, this research would not be possible. 
And I do want to genuinely thank all organizations and people involved for giving me a chance, someone who's coming from community college in an in inner city to be able to do this research and explore it so that way it can further enrich me academically and give me some guidance for what I want to do in the future, especially for grad school. Thank you very much and have a great day.